What's going on, everybody? This is Gotta Ask Why FM. It's DJ Savvy here. So I'm gonna be hanging out with Ricky Rick today. Uh, Boss Zonke. And we're just gonna be having a conversation, man. So what we've been doing as a station for the longest of time is we've been, you know, having a series of conversations to help young people um, to understand how to break through into several parts of several facets in the industry if I can put it like that so if you wanted to be a doctor we helped you if you wanted to be uh, a photographer we helped you you know like we had a series of conversations and as far as I know this is the last one for now um, so yeah I'm just waiting for Ricky Rick to connect and basically what you got to do is you know on the comment section Go through, man, you know, type down any question you'd like to, to ask Ricky, any question you'd like to ask me, but it's all about Ricky today. Please send all the questions for him, you know, and how to break into the music game, you know, we can't ignore that Ricky has become a solid voice in SA Hip Hop music and music at large. He's also one of those artists has been, that has been able to diversify his portfolio as a, as a talent, as an artist. He's been able to venture into TV, venture into fashion, venture into a whole lot of stuff. And I'm sure some of the other stuff we're possibly not aware of. So just waiting for Makado to hop on and then we'll have that conversation. But uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below. And I'll definitely make sure that he, he answers as many questions as possible. We're trying to run this for an hour. Uh, so to run it for an hour, look, I can talk. But I think to make it work, All right. While I wait for Ricky, uh, um, how to get into the music industry? That's what we want. That's what we want to understand. That's what we want today. Those are the questions we're trying to answer. So, sir, Jesus. Keep it locked. We'll answer your question. Um, Cause I don't have the answer, Sway. I don't have the answer, Sway. Drinking water. If it was my feet, I'll be drinking something else. Drinking water. Uh, when is the album coming through? Oh, this is Makado. He's here. He's in the building. Take it back, you're very fat, boys. I'll sing it back, yeah, boy. I'll sing it back. Yeah. I'm trying to rap like Ricky. I'll sing it. I'll sing it back, yeah, boy. I'll sing it clean. Makado! What's in this? What are you saying there? I'm pussy, I'm pussy, I'm pussy. Cheers, but it's in the pH. But it's in the pH level, yeah. Yeah, I'm at the pH. The pH level is pH 8. It's a PH8, boy. PH8, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, correct, boy. Oh, good to the Fiji water wasn't available, so we had to get what we can get. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, good, vast, the vast, the vast supply is low. Yes. We blame it on the COVID. What's <laughs> popping, doggy? I'm good, man. How are you, bro? I'm nice, dog. Like, I haven't seen you in a minute, but I see you on these online streets. How's life, man? Oh, man, dope, man. Trying to push, trying to push, trying to push. Obviously, with everything that's going on, you can only, you know what I'm saying? You can just sit yeah. tight, you know what I'm saying? You sit tight, you get in your brain a little bit, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Look, my G, so basically what the station is trying to do, my G, is to, you know, get the masses to ask you as many questions as possible on how you got your break into the game. Um, you know, all the questions will basically be from the listeners, will be from the people that follow IFM. Um, and hopefully we can be able to inspire one person to be a Ricky Rick one day or be bigger than Ricky Rick one day, yeah? Oh, it's already happening. It's already happening all over the world. <laughs> yeah. So it's but, beautiful. But let's, let's keep the energy going. I feel that. But let's take it to, to day one, my G. Um, I remember the fir the first time I was introduced to you, you were making a cameo in a music video, uh, always combing your beard as always, you know what I mean, fresh as always. Before you did that song with the layers, that was way, way, way back. But your break in music, like, do you still even remember how it happened? 
I, I actually like uh, you know, looking back on it, I don't remember the actual like there was no like uh, there was no like one big event. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But it was more of a collection, a collection of events. You know, and a collection of different people that plugged me into different sections and and different vibes and different sounds. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, I remember coming coming back uh, from coming back from Durban to Joburg uh, yeah. and coming to do school, uh, coming for varsity here. Yeah. And uh, I got to varsity college, like not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, mm. but thinking that I got to go study and try something out. So I ended up going to varsity college because I hadn't applied to any other university. And um, at varsity college, I just started like really getting into freestyling with cats and, really getting into ch chasing the ciphers you know um, yeah and like within that I, I don't know what to call it like that that like vc cipher circuit which we used to do every day you know yeah. the next day i decided to go to an art school where i could i could pursue art you know and uh and and, and pursue television and pers pursued movies and pursued film and uh where i'll be able to sort of make my music come alive and that's when i went to after when I went to AFTA, I think that was probably the big break because like, I was always surrounded by guys like Deleuze and watching him and everything that they were doing and watching the, you know, mm. the Josie movement come up. But when I got to AFTA, I was plugged into different types of hip hop, you know, uh, and I was introduced into, into uh, I was introduced to guys like DJ Ken Zero via my producer, Samson Moss. And it's you know my 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 thirst for wanting to learn about different sounds really kicked off i would say at that varsity because i was able to do the film work during the day and then go into music you know in my spare time and uh you know yeah. it didn't feel like i was it didn't feel like i wasn't studying you know uh, music just became part of the course mm. so it was like uh yeah I, I would say i would say going to film school was was probably the biggest turning point and and after that, everything just snowballed. I just started meeting people one yeah. by one. I started, you know, jumping onto shows. I remember going to, to Raqqa. There was a place called Raqqa. Uh, and uh, there used to be a party. They're called Party People. I remember going to Party People and, uh, and uh, watching like guys like Reason and Cuesta perform. And I was like, damn, I, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to yeah. do that. I want to do that. And then I started That's chasing it from there, you know. Yeah. That is sick because all the people you mentioned now are your homies, man. Yeah, that's the crazy part of that's the crazy part about it. It's like people that you look up to and that you see doing your thing, man, try to get close yeah. to them. You know what I'm saying? That's like one lesson mm -hmm. I learned. Like try to get close to people who are doing dope stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh and, and, and like those are long relationships, like like the relationship I have with reason is so like uh uh um um it's like it's it's hip hop. It's about hip hop, but it's not even about hip hop. It's really like uh, yeah. us being able to have conversations as young men, as young brothers. You know what I'm saying? But it all started mm. by hip hop. Yeah. You know, and uh, those relationships that you make through music, you, you you can never let them never let them go. Never let them go. Yeah, you know, people people never talk about they come up because it wasn't probably like memories they want to revisit or relive. But what is that? The earliest or the fondest memory you have about your come up? The earliest. The fondest memory about your come up? Oh, man. I wouldn't even say it was a fond memory because all the good memories, there's so many good memories. I, I, I always remember the negatives. Yeah. I, I, I remember yeah. doing Back to the City. I remember doing the Back to the, back to the City. I think it must have been either 2010 or it, it was either 20. Either 2010, yeah, I think it was 2010. Mm. Might have been, it might have been Back to the City 20, 2010. And I remember I had like four songs lined up. I remember getting booed off, booed off stage, but I never left the stage. I just stayed on stage. I remember getting booed on the stage at Back to the City, and that mm. like that's something that always that's that's always stuck in my mind. That like, you know, especially when you when it, when it comes to like building up support and building up a crowd. It's something that you acquire over time, you yeah. know. So, get, like being booed under the bridge was like something that 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 should have shaken my world and should have made me feel like, oh mm. man, 
I need to ne never try this again. But I kept knocking and kept saying like, yo, put me on, put me on, put me on. And now mm. when we perform there, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, always a, it's always a vibe. It's always turning up. So I would say that's like one of my strongest memories, early days in hip hop. Like it was one of my yeah. first shows. And uh, I remember people just like booing. I remember like a hundred people just booing. Everyone else is just watching. But I remember people booing. That's like, that's like one of my dopest memories. Cause it, you know, it, it's like, I can always look back on that and see how far we've come. Yeah. Why would you say it's, the, it's easy to, to remember the, the bad days over the positive? I mean, the, 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 bad, days, the bad days make you stronger, mm. you know? And, and, and like, the, the bad days is what you draw on every time you're about to do something new or something you haven't done before or when you're about to present yourself to people. The bad yeah. days is what, you, is what you try to avoid. You yeah. Know? You, you you try and avoid those as much as possible so it's hard it's hard to forget those days it's hard to forget the days when something didn't work out because you have to take that knowledge and ask yourself you know why didn't it work out was it me was i not good enough was it the environment what was the reason for this to happen and when you come back out the second time or whenever you decide to come back out you draw on that experience and that pain that you don't want to feel again so I, yeah. I've, I've 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 like just the way I live my life even now, like I always try to run away from the pain that I've felt before, you know? Yeah. I, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to keep feeling the same pain over and over. Yeah. You know, we, we're living in days where youngers want to get to Ricky Rick status, stadium status, you know, filling up, you know, massive arenas and just having like thousands of people watching them. But the process where you got to have five people, 10 people watching you so people can get to know your music. People don't want to go through that. Uh, what would you say helped you during those early days to, to, to pull a crowd so people can become solid Ricky fans? What would you say was your key? Because during those days, it was there, but it wasn't as solid as it is right now. What would you say was your key to build up an audience, people that would generally be Ricky fans from your come up to now? I think it's uh, um, um, like people use the word network lightly sometimes yeah but like network is pretty much the most important thing uh being able to have a personality that draws people in mm -hmm. before before they know your music and before they heard about your music do people do people recognize you as yo that that dude that dude who comes through you know that 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 guy who says this that guy who dresses like this you know what i'm saying that guy who did this for me you know what I'm saying? Um, I always try to put my personality before anything. You know, I, I'm not trying to sell yeah. people anything. Like, like you know, <laughs> you know, everyone is selling something to people. Uh, but what people don't really sell most times is like is who they are. And like, exactly. even like, with, even like, people always ask me like, uh, 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 like, who would you like to collaborate with? Like, who's who would you like to feature with? Like, that's never been important to me. It's mm. not like asking people for collaborations and for features has never been important to me. The, what's been important to me mostly is getting to know people, you know, and getting, to, and getting to understand people outside of what they do. And then if what we do can collide in some sort of space, or oh, boom, because we like each other and because we're down with each other, it's going to work. So mm. I've always tried to uh, 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 um, leave a, a mark of personality on people rather than, you know, saying like, listen to this, this is dope, recognize me. Recognize yeah. me for who I am. Recognize me for who I am first and what, and, and what I represent. And then, you know, the work, we'll, we'll deal with the work after. And I think that's yeah. a lot, that's, that, that, that's what I've tried to tell like, young homies when they come up to me and like, you know, they want to perform at the shows or they want to give you their music. I always tell them like, okay, I got your music, but let, can you talk to me for five minutes? Can you hold a conversation mm. for 10 minutes? You know mm. what I'm saying? If, if you can hold a conversation for 10 minutes and without telling me you're an artist first, you know, next time you pull up or next time I pull up on you, I'm definitely going to remember who you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's so much music and there's so much art and so much, there's so much visual stimulus going on everywhere we go that it's so hard to like meet someone who's giving you something to focus on. But mm. it's so easy to get to know somebody once you have a, a real conversation with them. Mm. I feel you. Uh, let's talk about, I know you've touched on this conversation a couple of times on your online platforms, especially Twitter, where you spoke about radio and airplay. 
but with some artists they they generally feel like they deserve to be on radio uh like yeah. they 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 have to be there on your side what would you say was the important elements when you were building up was radio when you were making music was it strictly for radio was it for just the streets or you wanted to make for the streets and then radio would catch up oh it, 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 to to be honest it was for the people around me you know yeah. it was for the people like uh uh my, my 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 mission is to is to uh, uh build uh, build an army of people that understand what you're about you know before yeah. the before the world must know what you're about you got to have an army around you that understands what you're about so for yeah. example it's like i was selling uh i was i was making cd's like 100 at a time or 50 at a time and 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 selling them and giving them out to people at my university you know and i started mm. it, i started it on that block like that was the block i had to that i had to sort of capture you know what i'm saying i had to have people that i see every day believe in what i do you know what i'm saying and uh yeah. and 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 and, and uh, you know getting it nationwide and getting it on the airways was never the priority the priority was everybody around me can they know what i am and what mm. i do you know what i'm saying can i get people around me supporting what i do yeah you know that was more important that was more important yeah, yeah. than uh than yeah. trying to get it on the airwaves you know so I, i always wanted to have a movement on the ground first before it's time to put on radio you yeah. know what i'm saying i feel you i feel you i get you my g uh let me see if i can get the first question through it's all about the masses asking you some questions there's one here is it organic that you find new artists to work with or you purposely uh, pers- purposely look for fresh new talent well it's organic it's, it's like 100% organic um like everyone that i've worked with or everyone that i've done records with or anything like that it's o- it's only guys that are around that are around us and 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 guys that have done something around us like uh you know if if we've we've c- I've come across your show i've seen you perform live or a homey party uncle party time says yo check out this guy's music we messing with this guy's music yeah. I, i i i bumped that in but it's always like uh i use the word network again it's all from the network and the network gets bigger and bigger every time so as the network expands there's more people coming into the network that have something to offer and then once they're in your yeah. network and they've, they've shown that they're about it and you know they're actually there for the right reasons you know Uh, yeah it it you got to help you got to help you know what i'm saying so from that point that's I that's how you, i sort I of you. that's how i make those decisions like you got to be around the section it's like for if someone wants to be a dj at yfm it's like you can't be a dj at yfm without ever pulling up to yfm you know what i'm saying like they don't just yep. they don't just they don't, they don't just pluck you out of nowhere you know what i'm saying you got to be you got to be around you got to put yourselves on the radar and and when you're on the radar, they're going to be like oh damn man we need to play this guy's track we need to yo we need to we need to get this guy a slot we need to put this guy on radio if you're around you know what i'm saying no one no one is ever going to take their time and energy driving around the street looking for dope people the dope people have to show themselves and they always do if you dope you show yourself yeah you you know you know and people yeah. are going to recognize you know yeah but you got to show I yourself you. you can't you can't be in a bunker you can't be in a basement You got to come out yeah. and say yo I'm here. You know. Yeah. I feel you. Here's another one. Uh Next question, Mother Bang says, what's been the hardest feature you've ever worked on and how do you get through it? Hardest feature. Yeah. The hardest feature you've Man. ever worked on and how did you get through it? How did I don't I don't think I've I don't think there's been any hard features if any any hard fe- hard features never get done. <laughs> hard, fe- hard features <laughs> don't work. Bro. Hey, if you hey, if you complicate it. Like, dog, I'm like like I'm living like I'm living in another place right now. The place I'm living now is called no bullshit. So it's like you know, once there's a, once there's a sign of bullshit it's like now nah, I'd rather not put myself in that situation. You know what I'm saying? I want to yeah. I, I want to put myself in a situation where 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 I'm always where I can be always be happy you know I I don't feel like I'm 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 doing something 
Justin J. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, yeah. I got to do things that make me happy. So sometimes you try, even like features that you want to do, like you might want to do the feature, but it just might not work out. But I'd rather not try force the verse. I'd rather just be like, yo, we're gonna tr well, let's try the next one. You get me? Yeah. But I like, I don't, I, like, I don't, like, I don't want to put myself through like now doing things I don't want to do. Or, like every, everything I do, I want to do. Yeah. No forced energy vibes. Nah, 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 nah. All right, here's another one. How do you talk to people higher in the industry without coming across as an upcoming rapper? I guess you did touch on this briefly uh, when you spoke about networking, but how do you come across as just someone who's in between or maybe I am not here to waste your time? Um, like I said before, and it, it, it's a bit, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a bit give and take, but you know, for me personally, mm. when you start a conversation with somebody, imagine like I come up to you, I'm like, uh, and, and, and okay, we're meeting each other for the first time. Okay, introduce yourself, Savvy. Oh, Sabelo, Sabelo, known as DJ Savvy. But yeah, man, how to work. Uh, Savvy, come on, man. Give us a night. Come on, Savvy. Come on, Savvy, give us. Let's introduce yourself. It's the Don't. first time we're talking. Introduce. It's the first time we ever meet. Okay, wait. First time we ever meet. First Yo, what's good, bro? Meet. What's up, dog? Yo, what's Good going on, man? How you feeling? I'm nice and fine. I'm clean, please. He's in fine. Yo, great performance, dog. Like, yes, sis. Ah, you killed it as always. Ah, big up, man. You know, it's just trying to get the vibes going, man. You like the show? Yeah, man. It's a vibe. First time here in Joburg. And I came out here just to see, we'll see how do you guys normally do it. I'm, I'm from KZN, you know? Oh, KZN, go pick KZN. I'm from Monday, in fact. So it's the first time here in Yeah. Have you ah, ever been here? Ah, 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 no, I haven't been, but I want to pull up. I haven't uh, been, but I want to pull up. Someone was actually, someone was actually telling me I need to pull up. I actually need to pull up, do a show or something out there. You know any promoters out there? Ah, uh, I'm cheating on you. My husband is Kawin, which is not far from the Monday, but I can connect you with them. But before school, I'm gonna learn that. Have you ever performed anywhere, Kesele? You see, what I'm saying. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying, Sabi? Yeah. So that's the intro. We just spoke. Now, now we just got a whole bunch of information. Yeah. about each other and and we didn't even we haven't even touched on what we really do yeah. you feel me yeah and now i know that hey there's this cat that they can set me up with with some 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 promoters to try to you know what i'm saying yeah you get me but i get you doc but then how do you get that Gotta across that. To, to another youngin because i think when people look at you they think like you you're not accessible like we are too so you know it's ricky reed dog like you know yeah it's, it's 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 not easy but i guess that's the that's the trick that's the trick you know what yeah. i'm saying like for me it's like i've met so many people around the world like when i travel i always meet new people every time i travel i meet new people i link up with the old people that i've met like i i i've i've i've, I've kept all the relationships from everyone that i've met a anywhere i go whether it's paris or milan or london yeah or new york or la or atlanta i've got like i like you know it's, it's good money when i'm when, when i pull up there mm. and what i notice is that every time you pull up it's never going there to seek a feature or seek this or seek that you really go in there to be within the people to yeah. be within the people you yeah. know and like I'll give you a story. Like even with Les and them, like Les only started like putting me on tracks in 2012. And I, I, I knew Les for you know, and I, I knew Les since primary school. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So, but we only started doing tracks in 2012, 2011, mm. 2012. You get me? Mm. So it's like there's that patience level where you're just gonna have to, you're gonna have to sort of like hold in that desire to express to somebody how much you want to like how much you look up to them yes your actions will say you look up to them but yeah you sometimes gotta hold in that desire to say this is what i do put me on you gotta hold yeah. them back a little bit and, yeah and and, and 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 build the relationship and the rapport you feel me yeah that's like and that's hard to do because 
half the time you don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> but if you don't have anything to talk about, just shut the fuck up and stand in the corner. <laughs> stand in the corner and just watch. Stand yeah. in the corner and watch. You know, you do do that for do that for a month. After a month, you're gonna know what to say. You will know where to where the conversation mm. can go. You know what I'm saying? But before yeah. that, you just learn. Just shut the fuck up. Close your eyes and just and just watch. Watch what's going on. And that's why I like Bram so much yeah. because Bram, like, especially like a couple of years ago, Bram was like, you pull up to Bram. There's all these fucking kids in Bram that all that all do something dope and and all have something. They have something to contribute to what you're doing. But half yeah. of them are just chilling on the block. So you even start getting scared. Like after a couple of months, I start getting scared. Like, yo, who the fuck is that? What does that guy do? I start asking mm. them with the questions. Like, yo, what do you do actually? And he's mm. like, nah, man, I'm a designer, man. You know, check out my designs. Here's my page. Mm. And then he and then he dips. He leaves. Boom. Yeah. It's like, damn. I gotta, I got, I gotta figure out this guy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. sometimes it's like. You you need to know who you are and know what you can bring, but sometimes learn how to put your back on the wall and shut the fuck up and watch. Yeah. And watch. And watch and see how they're moving. Look at them. Look at them carefully. Don't just want to jump in because you're not ready. You can get burnt. Watch them. Yeah. Watch them. And once you figure out what they're doing, boom, insert yourself. You get yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who who would you say were the key people you were observing in the game before you you got in? Outside. Oh man. Who we? I mean, like uh, Scoop was someone that I, I I watched very closely because Scoop was like, you know, I met Scoop in that transition from 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 when I just got to film school. So I was watching Scoop on TV, and from watching him on TV. And I saw that he was around the same area, which was, you know, Melville, Auckland Park area. I used to watch how this guy moves. This guy was like in 10 places at the same time. Scoop was always in 10 places at the same time. It's like he, would, he was shaking hands this side, giving hugs this side, and then disappearing. And then mm. pop up the other side of the street. He's opening the boot. He's getting clothes from another homie, talking to them, smiling, laughing. Mm. And then... You close your eyes, that motherfucker's gone, and now he's on radio. Yeah, I was watching like guys like that, guys that were able to walk into an area or a space, and he was able to light people up and then dis and then disappear. Mm. And people be like, "Damn, that that guy's got a crazy energy." I mean, and I always say his name, but same with Les. Les would walk mm. into a space and everyone's smiling or mm. everyone's cool. You know, everyone starts acting cool when he walks into a space. But he's talking to everyone, laughing with everybody. Ha <laughs> ha, what's good? Hey, what's up, baby? What's good? Hey, good to see you again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always, I always watch people that were very sociable. And I was like, I got to be as sociable as them. Mm. At least I need to try to be until, until I'm used to it. Because sometimes I also want people to just leave me alone a lot of the time. Mm. But like, guys like, like Les and Scoop, they can turn it on when it's time to be with people. They can turn it on and 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 and, and, and not try, not try being a shell. But when mm. they're around people, they're around people. So I always watch people like that, like you know, great people, per great people, um, people persons, if that's a word. But yeah. like watching people's persons, that's like something very important to me. Yeah, and then and then how would you advise the youngins that are you know? The shy ones, you know, that are not good at talking, you know, like they don't have managers, but they're super, super talented, you know. How do I, how do I get a Ricky's attention? How do I get a, a Savvy's attention, you know, before I even let them play, the, play my music or even, even then hear my music? How do I, I shine in a space or, or get Ricky's attention without coming across as a creep? Well, that's the beautiful thing with social media now mm. because social media has made it so the guys that can't walk into a room and be the life of the party. Yeah. They, they can't walk into a room and just open up and be this, uh, you, you know, uh, 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 um, um, a, a, a extroverted person. Mm. Um, now social media, there's a place where you can set up that narrative. So yeah. even guys that don't talk as much, that don't get out there as much, don't like, you know, being in people's space too much, 
just by social media, there's a there's an avenue for you to get your image out without you saying anything. Mm. Which is like, I mean, guys like, uh, um, how do I say, uh, uh, um, man, like, um, there's a there's an artist called uh, February. I don't know if you know about February. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Feb. I know Feb. I've played him a couple of times. Yeah. There's an artist called February. February is is a very introverted guy. He's mm. super introverted, man. He's just the guy who sticks to himself and and does his thing. But he's about the art. So when you go right. to his page, you can see exactly who he is and what he represents. And he's posting his music and he's posting his artistic vision on the socials, you yeah. know. And the socials make it around. Like, people think, like, you got to have a lot of followers for people to see your page. Most of the pages that are on my explore are, like, have a 1,000 followers, 500 followers, two, 200 followers. Zuchi, yeah, like Zuchi. Someone in the comments here is saying, like, Zuchi. Zuchi yeah. is a fucking quiet guy. Like, you're not going to get shit out of Zuchi. But I've yeah. learned with Zuchi, like, I've learned with Zuchi, like, if I want Zuchi to... Show himself. I always gotta poke him. Like I keep, I keep poking Zuchi. Like Zuchi, Zuchi, come wake up, wake yeah. up. Let's operate. I keep doing that to Zuchi, and mm. we've done. We've got like, I think we've got like maybe like three records that's in this computer. We've got one record that's already done now, and we've got like two other records that we're working on right now. But it's like it's, he, he's so introverted that we get to learn how to treat him. He mm. doesn't have to, you know, try be like us. We get to learn how to treat him. You know, yeah. and that's a, that's a dope thing about social media, you know, and like there's a there's a mystique. There's a mystique to guys who do great work and who aren't all over the place. You know, there's a there's like a, a little bit like of an old school mystique, almost like how artists used to be in the in the 90s or in, in, in the in the 80s, in the 90s. There was a mystique to artists, you know, and yeah. some people can still pull that off. And I see a lot of guys pulling them off, like example, Teleman, like. Dog, the first time I heard Teleman fucking talk, I was almost like, this guy's punking us. This can't be Teleman. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, like, I'd never heard his fucking voice before. I, I, I'd never seen, you know what I'm saying? I'd, I'd never seen him get loud or, or anything like that. And when I heard his voice, I'm like, damn, can't deny him tell her. But the, all of his music, <laughs> I know it. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. you know, so the, I like those experiences of like, damn, this cat is quiet, but he does his thing quietly. And that's who he is. Like, yeah. I don't need to, like, you know. And I mean, even like, um, you know, I keep dropping these names, but whatever. It's like, it's all love. But like, even guys like Reese, you know, like, like it's, it's, it's painful for people to not get to interact with Reese. Right? Yeah. And they want to interact with him so much. They want him to, they want to do interviews with him. They want to be around him. They want to get to know what's in his brain. But now he's doing it the mystique way. He's keeping a mystique about it. You know, you hear him through his music or when you need to hear him. But there's a certain mystique that people who are a bit introverted can keep going, you know. And you, you see that per as perfect example. The, the quietest, quietest artist in the country is the biggest artist when it comes to social, to social media, you know. Mm. And yeah. there's got to be there's got to be something there. So you don't need to be everywhere all the time, but you definitely need to know who you are and know how to communicate who you are. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? With, with some of the cats you've mentioned, I'm not going to direct this to, to any of the names you just said. Some of them, they're talented, but they hang around with the wrong crowds, which kind of eventually messes up with their flow. You know, they will start popping up in the industry. They get booked for interviews. How are you able to keep a level head when you are starting to get attention? I did it. What, what, what are you talking about, Sebi? No, like, ask to... about me. Sebi, yeah. listen. I know. Ask about me, Sebi. Ask like... about, like, if you ask about me, yeah. like, there's a reason why I only, there's a reason why, and not to say your question is, 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 is invalid or anything. Yeah. Just, that was just the term of speech. But there's a reason why I only became the Ricky Rick that people know at the age 26. Mm. You get me? There's a, there's a reason. Yeah. And, and, and those, those, I don't look at the, the years from 18 when I left school, from 18 to 25. I don't look at them as a waste. Mm. But I definitely know I could have done better. Mm. I definitely know I could have made better choices mm. in, 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 in life. Mm. I definitely know I could have treated people better. I definitely know I could have uh, 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 had stronger morals mm. and a stronger code that I live by. Mm. 
you know. So I look back on my beginning years still as a success, but a success because I had to learn how not to be. Mm. Those 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 seven those seven eight years of my life was the lesson of like how do I not how 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 do I need to carry myself like like what what's the what how why do I fail? Those seven yeah. years were. Was 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 answering the question: Why do I fail? Why do I keep failing? Why do I keep not getting the recognition? Why do I keep not getting the opportunities? I I I use those seven those seven years. So there's a reason I only came out when I was 26. Yeah. You know. So even for the young guys now, everything is happening younger. But with the young cats, what they're gonna have to go through is all the growing pains of being uh, 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 a teenager. And then go through the, the growing pains of being a, a, a man in, or, or a woman in their early 20s who just wants yeah. to have fun and fuck around and you've got no cares, you've got no responsibility. You still got, they got, they got to still go through that. Unfortunately, a lot of people, they're going to have the spotlight on them while that's happening, unfortunately. Mm. So that comes with its, 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 its own set of issues. It comes with its own set of scrutiny, you know? Mm. But... Those beginning years, you're just learning, you know. Yeah. And that's why I don't, I don't really like, like, I don't like keeping beefs with people, or I don't like fighting with people for too long, because it's like, what we fought about two years ago, three years ago. We have to have grown in the past two, three years. Yeah. We have to have grown, and if we've grown, maybe we know how to handle those things better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've always approached like my past like that, like, oh, those were all learning curves. I had to go through a hundred fuck ups. I had to do, mm. I had to do the drugs to get off the drugs. You mm. get what I'm saying? I had to teach myself how to do that. You know, mm. luckily it wasn't in front of a, a microscope with all the lights on me, luckily. But yeah. I got to teach myself how, how to be better. You yeah. get what I'm saying? I got to yeah. teach myself how to try be in a relationship and that's mm. even learning that i still have that i'm still going through now at this age yeah at 30 yeah. you know so it's like uh yeah it's tough it's tough but man like every like dog, everyone makes mistakes and goes through you know so many different you know you know so many crevices of life that you know everything that you do early in your life and even if you do things that are old there's always time you know to redeem yourself and to re redeem those actions so like, yeah. you know, even when people are surrounded by the wrong people, eventually they won't be. Hopefully they make it through and they won't be and they'll have all the lessons. Mm. All the lessons, they'll, they're going to have all those lessons. You know? Mm. Yeah. Wait, after, after, after you realize what you and find out, like the boy is really deep into this thing and it was just going sideways while you were still going on an up trajectory, how were you able to pull yourself out of that? Because some people have never pulled themselves out of it. I, 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 like, uh, um, oof, I don't want to sound like, you know, like I'm an ultra spiritual person, but like my, fa my father passed away when I was 18. Yeah. Right. 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 Like he, he passed away just as I finished my trick. He passed away that January, you know, yeah. uh, 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 just a couple of days after we actually got our matric results. So. When he passed away, I did my best to try to block myself off from who he was. I tried my best to not learn anything about uh, who my family was. I tried my best to close myself off from that chapter. I tried to, I tried to bury that chapter because the mm. pain was too much. And, you know, you get into looking for uh, 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 external uh, influences to make you feel better, right? Mm. And then one day I was like, literally sitting there thinking to myself, like, I need to get back in touch with my pops. I need to start having conversations with my pops. So I started making music about, about, uh, uh, about him. And I started mm -hmm. having conversations on music about, uh, in my music about, about him. And it helped me analyze sort of what that chapter of my life was, what I knew I was going to be missing in my life, and what do I need to do to make sure that my, 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 my seeds don't go through the same thing? You yeah. Know? And, and 
by coincidence that happened at the same time as as my son as we knew we knew that we were pregnant with 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 Mikey yeah so it happened boom at the same time and I was like damn I got to start having conversations about about you know w- w- where I come from and who I am mm. you know and and when I started having those conversations I was sort of able to try try make better decisions you know mm. I'm not saying that you now make great decisions or uh, uh, I'm the best decision maker ever no I can mm. make better decisions because I I I keep looking back at the past like we we're talking about before those bad experiences you can't run away from them you got to use mm-hmm. them to create something better in the future mm. so it was really just trying to get in touch with 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 my father through some music you know and there's a song on my album called papa song like that papa song was actually what 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 said to me i i can put out this album i can make yeah. this album and let me put it out when when i was able to make papa song which was speaking basically directly to my dad was uh 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 um that was the moment where I was like oh, okay I can move forward now I don't have to be the person who's 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 got shame you know who lets their shame overtake them or or anything like that so you know that just talking to my father who, who wasn't around was you know was really the motivation to you know to change my life around and even now what I'm going through today I'm going through the same thing today You know, mm. I'm going to, 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 to today why why I haven't make, made an album in so long is because I'm having a, a, a deeper conversation with my past I'm having a mm. deeper conversation deep, with my past and that needs that conversation has to come out in the music it has to come out in the music I can't make just music to vibe to and just jam to right now right now I'm having deep conversations with my past you know And and that's because of my children and what age my children are at now. I have to have deep conversations with my past to be able to present anything of value. You know, you know, nothing will be of value if I don't, you know, take take my whole life into consideration. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, this is this is so deep what you're sharing because one thing I'm slowly picking up, and you know, after thinking, you know, of several songs, and I see people quoting you here, is that some artists are scared of of sharing this through music. Would you say that for you it's 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 after family values it's it's become easy to to share your life experiences through music? Yeah, it's been it's been much easier. You know, it's been much easier. Um you know, that it was like because like I I want to be a fresh nigger. I want to be a fresh fly nigger getting all the bitches, getting all the money. I want to be that guy. Yeah. But at the same time I also want to be a good dad yeah. you know i want to be someone who's not i don't want to be i don't want to be the womanizer anymore you get what i'm saying mm. I, I, i like in my like the music is so especially hip hop like we grew up so much like it's about money womanizing and and, 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 and and drugs that's music that's that's the hip hop that you know this generation is sort of grown up to it's money music and drugs that's what it is majority of us coming out right and i can relate to some of that stuff but now i'm starting to really relate to different things because i i, I don't i'm not trying to hide away that i'm a, I, i'm trying to be a family man or a good example for my family i, I i'm not going to hide that away so yeah. definitely like you know that was a step for me getting more in touch with with who i am and i've got to carry that on you know i've got to carry that on whether it's through music or whether it's to anything anything else i do i got to be able to carry that on yeah people are saying i'm blurred out here let me move now okay cool see on in your board i don't know why people want to see me man yeah your wi fi yeah now the wi fi is getting slate slate your 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 wi fi is a potato ha now my wi fi lit dog super strong super strong okay cool Let me pull up some questions that the people have. Uh here's one question. For people of not many words, but let they work speak, does that give you a good vibe around them? Say what? Uh he says for those of I guess people who don't have many words, but they let they work do the talking, 
does yeah. that give you any vibe around them? So I guess when you link up with people that are talented, are you able to pick it up through the energy? Of course, of course. It's an aura. Yeah. It's, yes. It's, there's an aura. There's, a, there's an aura. You know, everybody's got an aura. Sometimes it can grab your attention and sometimes it doesn't. But everyone's got some sort of aura and sometimes the aura just comes out in the music and, and that's okay too. Yeah. As, as long as we're able to see it somewhere. I feel you. Here's another question. Where should you prioritize your money in the early days of your music career? If you had to answer that, what would you say? <laughs> if you make any money. <laughs> the, 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 the time you started making more money in the game, you know? Like, if you had to give the young Ricky Ricky some advice, what would you say? Bruh, like, I, like we lost, like, not, not, not even lost. The second you decide to be an artist, a musician, or any sort of artist, just know that you are, you, you, you're going to take every resource you have and pour it into this dream. And this dream is like a lottery. It's like, it's like lotto. Like, the more you play, the, the, the higher chance you have of winning. You know? So you, 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 you have to keep investing everything, everything into it if you really want it until it works. You know? Yeah. Like, I, 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 I don't even... I don't even count what we've invested. I, I try not count what I, what, what I invested before I started seeing returns because it's, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. Like the hustles, like I used to sell sneakers, like I was selling sneakers for my brother, you know, so I, can, so I can print CDs, you know? I was selling sneakers for my brother so I could print CDs, you know? And uh, uh, um, um, that's all your time, all your money needs to be poured into buying equipment, into into creating some sort of infrastructure where you can create without needing anybody else. It's very important. Even if you have a job, you know, everything that you, that, that you put into your job, all the time and effort and waking up early at five o'clock in the morning to make it there by eight o'clock, you have to look at that as that's just a, that's a step for your next chapter. So, mm. you know, you gotta, you, you, you gotta take everything out of that job. Don't be like, oh, I'm working this job. I fucking hate it. I want to do something else. But when I get my paycheck, I'm going to go buy a pair of Jordans. Fuck that. If you hate your job and you're tired of working your job, but you have to work it to make some money, take the money that you make from that job and put it into what you love. Yeah. You know? Powerful you know? vibes. Powerful vibes. All right. Nantanya, which distribution uh, industry uh, would you recommend to independent artists? I guess it's trying to figure out about distribution chairs at large. Uh, man, I would say, I don't know, you go to, uh, go to DistroKid, go to CD Baby. There's all these online aggregators that put your music up virtually for free. They take a, like a little bit of commission, but you can put your music up, you know, on all platforms, you know, just go to DistroKid, CD Baby. There's a whole bunch of stuff online, but you know, use your Google, you get me? Like <laughs> use your Google and read the reviews also at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Cause I could say use this channel, but that channel could fuck you up. Like something that works for one person is not necessarily going to work for someone else. So you got to do your research at the same time. I get you. Uh, here's one. I'd also like to hear your opinion on this one. Where do you see the hip hop culture in 10 years time? It'll be interesting. I think um, I, I, I'll be... I'm more interested, uh, the culture will continue to grow and it will continue to be more uh, prevalent all over the world. Uh, but I I'm interested to see what the content of the culture will be in 10 years. Mm. You know, what, what are we going to be talking about in 10 years? You know, yeah. because from, from when I, you know, from when I sort of was introduced into hip hop, it was, when I was introduced to hip hop, it was very conscious. It was very, um, it was black power, uh, real black excellence, not financial black excellence, but real black excellence, uplifting black consciousness. You know, I was introduced to hip hop through those means. And then it sort of developed into something a bit more flashy, uh, something very ce ce celebrati celebratory. And then we got into that. And then we got into the 2000s, it be, you know, uh, and we got into the 90s, it was gangs. And, uh, 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 and then it moved on into... Uh, uh, um, a party, you know, the late 90s became parties, you know, 
and then now the the, the I guess the two thousand the, these two thousand late two thousand tens two thousand fourteens became just about like being fresh and swagging and 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 dripping on them. And uh, yeah. right now, I think we're still there. I'm interested to see where where is the majority of hip hop gonna move uh, in terms of their content. I, I'm interested to see that. Like, are we gonna go back to black consciousness? You know, uh, you know that's that's really what I'm interested in seeing. What's gonna be the cycle of hip hop? You know, I don't I don't think we've been through full cycles yet. So I want to yeah. see I want to see what that next step is after this. You know. Yeah. All right. Next question. I'm trying to put in as many questions as possible. How important is relocating to Chobo for artists trying to break in the industry? Not not important. Not important at all. Um, obviously, when you have lots of work in Chobo, that's one story. But I feel like you know movements that are supported by the people where you are from are usually the strongest the strongest movements, you know. Yeah, you look at an artist like Uzagwe, before before Zagwe people knew exactly who he was and what and, and and people had looked at his resume in Joburg, people knew that he had the support and love and 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 and, and he was doing ma massive things in KZN, you know. Yeah. And 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 and, and, and people take those type of moves for granted, you know, like D Koala, she's in, she's in Kailicha, like she represents Kailicha, you know, and people in Kailicha yeah. are going to put her, put her on their shoulders. I think it's very important for us to have movements like that because once you get to Joburg, everything sort of becomes the same. It becomes an industry game. Mm. And it's, it's very refreshing to see movements that are, 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 are true to their hometown. You know, you look at a guy like Maglera Dope Boy and what he's doing, where he's at, that 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 support that you can that you have from your hood is something very important. Youngster in Cape Town, it's very important to have a lock on your city, you know. Uh, but for guys like me that moved around to to every city that have lived in every city and end up settling in Joburg, obviously we have we we have to deal with being in Joburg. But mm. if you can if you can really be like own Pretoria. You know, it's very important because it's harder for you to get lost. When you come to Joburg, those, those bright lights, they hit you, man. They hit you, you know. A lot of shit changes when you get to Joburg. Uh, it's hard yeah. to stay the same and remain the same when you're in Joburg. But, you know, so I, I, I believe in people building up where they're from. You feel me? Mm. I, don't, I don't want to bring the fashion into it because we're talking about music, but traveling inspires a person and the artistry. With you, out of all the countries you've been to, is there any country that inspired you to to package or produce your music differently? Um, man, it's always a tricky. It's always tricky because, like I say, I'm not like I'm not <laughs> fucking Stogie. <I'm> stogie. stogie. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Stogie? <laughs> Shit, yo, um. Man, I even forgot the question. Uh, when I travel, I'm never, and, and, you know, I don't want people to take this wrong. Uh, you know, music for me is a, is a channel that I can use to communicate. Yeah. One of the channels I can use to communicate if I, if I choose to communicate. It's never been... hundred percent it's never been everything it means everything to me but it's never been everything yeah so when i travel i'm never i'm not traveling in the mind state of a musician going to travel to figure something out or to go get something mm. i'm traveling as a as as ricardo Macado, who can put his backpack on and go meet people from all around the world and those interactions I have with people sometimes advise what I do with my art. Yeah. But it's really to be in the space and feel people's spirits and understand who they are. That's what I travel mostly for. You yeah. Know, very few trips I'll make just with a music mission. Because those are the missions, like, I've made a lot of those missions. Shit never happens. 
You know, mm. she never goes down and like, oh, I've got a week, I've got to get this done. It never happens, you know, or it doesn't happen organically. So I like to travel to, to be organic in, in a space, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. And then the music just like, you know, it, it, if, if you change as a, as a person because of a trip you made or a person that you met, that's going to reflect a little bit in your music, you mm. know. But the mission is not to take it for the music. It's just to take it as a, a, as a, a student of life and a student of personalities. Yeah. Yeah. And let's talk about producers being a producer yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always interact with, with, with youngins who are producers and they also are in their own right, but they always find it hard to work with other producers. Um, through your journey in music, would you, would you say you found a way to, to work with other producers or do you still prefer to produce your own music? I, 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 like recently I've been, I've been, I've been getting, uh, getting, uh, I've always taken a lot of beats from producers, but I, I've, I've like, I learned how to do music by myself. Yeah. In, 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 in so I, I, even today, I, I like to do music in my own space by myself, you mm. know, but I love getting beats and ideas from people. I even, I've, I've even asked a couple people to, uh, to cook up some records for me for this next project. But, um, I've always enjoyed getting to my own head when I make music, you know. Yeah. And maybe that's maybe that's why I take so much time, but I I get into my own head, you know. So, like we we work on a couple of projects with some producers. I don't want to say too much, but it's it's refreshing working with other producers. But the way I I like it is like being in my own space and really figuring out what the fuck what the fuck do I want to talk about, especially when I'm doing a project which I haven't done in a while. So when I'm doing yeah. a project, it's me zoning into my own head in my own space. Nobody disturbed me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If it comes to, to, to working with producers who actually have the chance to direct you on how they would like to hear you through the music, how do you go about sourcing those producers? Is it, is it based on the beats? Do they have an opportunity to be with you in studio? Do you prefer working online? How does it normally work with you? Of course. I mean, I, 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 I love working with other guys because... They give you uh, 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 another perspective. So, you know, like, uh, you know, G Gemini, whether we finish songs, like I always go, me and Gemini can go back and forth when it comes to music, you know. We go, we go back and forth with ideas and I love guys like him directing me. But most times you find that most producers don't want to direct you because of who you are and your, what you, of your name, you know. So a lot of people get shy to direct you, but, you know, I, I always welcome people directing you and saying, you know, try this, try that. Even like songwriters, like, because I, I wanted to do like a couple of different types of tracks, like like uh, some, you know, going to more on the, on the soulful R&B side. And I, I've been getting song, songwriters helping me with a lot of that stuff too. And listening to their, 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 their views on songwriting and learning about how they write songs. I love that type of process. But, you know, it's like most times people are afraid to tell you, yo, do this. So I always appreciate when a producer comes through and says, try this, try that. Oh, that didn't come out nice. Try this, you know. I, I, yeah. I love that type of engagement too. I feel you. Here's another question. Would you say upcoming artists should focus uh, more on pushing singles or a full body of work? Hey, man, do, do, do whatever you feel, man. Like, because there's, there's different type of artists. There's artists who are single artists who are good at making single bangers. And then the, and, 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 and are bad at making albums. And then there's artists who are really great at making albums, but it's a great album, but there's no singles. Uh, so, yeah. you know, they got, you, you, they have to, you have to try it out and see what really works for you. Um, but I feel like now with the climate, streaming wants you, the streaming services want you to put out more and more and more and more and more of everything. So if you're going to do singles, with streaming now, you got to do 10 singles, you know, mm. in a year. And if you're going to do an album, you better, you better, you better put on 20 tracks. To, even if they're short, you need to do 20 tracks. After the 20 tracks, you need to hit them with a deluxe version. So they're telling you to do all that stuff. But it's nice when artists can figure out what works for them and keep to their own strategy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you know, it, just, it goes on how you feel, bro. Yeah.
I get you. All right. There's another question I saw. Trying to How much time you got, you Sabi? They're gonna cut. They're gonna cut us out after an hour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we got like five minutes or so. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, man, there was a there was a question that came through. This young and ready to ask about when you found your sound. But I'll ask you this question: Do you still do freestyles? I saw Freestyle Fridays. Will you still do freestyles for interviews on radio? All the, I mean, that's the thing. Nobody's ever asked for a freestyle, but dog, <laughs> I keep, I keep, like I told someone today, I keep 16 16s in the head, at least. Ooh. I keep 16 16s, at least. 16s in the year. At least, at least. So next time I pull up to your show, well, actually, let's make it an event. Let's make it an event. Yeah. Yeah. Here's this question. When did you realize that you found your sound and you were confident in it? Um, I think when I started in, when I started infusing when I started infusing Kwaito into my beats. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that because that was different, you know. I, I was I've always made like soulful beats, uh, I tried to make soulful beats and like beats people can, you know, bob to. But when I when I started infusing the quieto element into it i really felt like yeah this mm. is it you know that was like that felt like a breakthrough moment because everything i had been doing for seven eight years but mm. when i started infusing the quieto i realized oh damn this is something now we're on to something mm. w would you say the culture of cosines is still is still alive we've seen what your cosine has done for some youngins would you say the culture <laughs> of cosines is still prevalent I think a cosign is nice, but uh, it's never about the cosign. It's really about how the person who's getting cosign is going to push. You mm. know, it's really about that. It's cosigns are useless unless that mm. artist is about to push. Yeah. You know, and that artist is about is ready to run. That's yeah. when it's really. That's when it's effective. Mm. You know, um, you know, and and we've cosigned a lot of people that haven't done great too. It's not like everyone just blows up. It's like, you know, it's it's not based on the cosign. It's always based on, you know, are they ready to run? Mm. Once once they get that spotlight on them, are they ready to run and fuck shit up? You get me? Yeah. There's there's so many kids who are probably envious when they see other kids getting that Ricky that Ricky verse because you know the Ricky verse can change your life. How do you go about yeah. sourcing those, those those records to to bless with the verse? Ah uh, man, I, I like if if a record is dope and I, I feel the vibe, I jump. I, I want to jump on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dope records. It's gotta be dope records. Dope records. Dope records. Mm. You know, once in a lifetime type records. You know. Yeah. That's when it's that's when it's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. I get you, Machi. Look, man. Uh, so album wise, is it is the 2021 projects? Because the feed is about to end. Is it 21 was... 20 projects? Uh, are you probably gonna drop an EP? What can we expect from Ricky? Yeah, I, I, I was ready to drop something in the winter, but this sort of like threw us out. So now that gives me like, you know, a few months to carry on working on the concept, which is great. So I would say 2020, 2021. But you know, you never know. Yeah. Can you share you what kind know. of sound you're vibing with right now? Nah, I can't really share the sound because there's so many different sounds, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't want to give too much away. But features? it's like it's different. It's different. Is it just it's TVs, different. What's the features looking like, or is it just you? I think it's mostly me for now. But you know, we got some features. We're working with a lot of people, so you know. But yeah. it's most. It's mostly me. It's mostly me. It's my story. This is my story. All right. All right. Ah, oh, oh, man. Like, me. Let me throw this question. Have you ever thought about venturing into the continent and and, and featuring other rappers in the continent? Uh, we just did. We just did a record with uh, Mayo Kun. Uh, oh, okay. We just did a record with him last month. The so that's Lego. crazy. Like, yeah, uh, we did. Yeah, uh, we did a gang. We did the gang remix with him, which was dope. You know, but like again, I, these are people that I know. You know, records with Davido. These are people that I know, and are yeah. my friends. So yeah. it's like we just make music with our friends, man, and people that we, you know, that's it. You know, so it's not even about like trying to venture like nah like we just do music with our friends bro yeah yeah I eat, thank you very much doc for taking the time chatting to us i'm sure everyone has been inspired